Hey everybody, my name is Ryan, and I'm here to show you a demonstration of my game Sigmund. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole game because it's, uh, it's fairly long, and there's a lot of code. So I'm just going to show you certain aspects of it, because some of it is kind of redundant. And once I show you the basic principles, you'll get a general idea of what's going on behind the scenes. So initially here, it just wants a name. So we do that. It tells us a brief description of how to play. And we enter the main sequence here. Um, there's four main rooms like this one. And in each of the rooms, you'll see there are a list of uh, at least five things to do. In this particular case, there's nine things to do. Uh, we can look at various things. And we can go to the inventory. And we can enter other doors that lead to the other rooms in the game. Um, So I guess the first thing I'll show you is the inventory. I'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see we have a status for our psyche. This is sort of a health bar. It tells us we're feeling dandy. And uh, we already have some items here. You start off the game with a $5 bill, some bubble gum, and a flashlight. And we currently have nothing equipped. If, if I go to equip an item and I just type in some gibberish, it knows that we don't have that item. And if I equip some item that we do have, it'll give us a success message. Now let me go ahead and pause this really quick. And when I do, I'm going to bring up the code. OK, so here's the inventory code. As you can see, it's mainly just some if statements that uh, kind of check our health, which is a variable, and display different messages based on how we're feeling. And in this section here, uh, it'll display an item if you have it. It just validates that you actually have the item. So if you do have it, the value will be 1, and the system will output the item. Because every time you obtain the item, the value changes. And another important aspect of the inventory is the last room section. Now, since I mentioned there was four rooms, you can check the inventory in each of the rooms. However, if you just exit the inventory, the program won't know how no, won't know where to go so each room has a value assigned to it so when you exit it it knows where to put you back out at um, let's see lastly you there's an equipped variable and if you incorrectly type in the item or you don't have the item it will come up with an error message so you couldn't let's say I wanted to equip an egg and you knew you'd played the game before and you knew that's how you had to pass through something. You would just type egg in. But if you actually don't have the egg, it won't work. So everything's checked so no one can cheat. And uh, yeah, if, if something doesn't work, it goes to a fail equip method. And the fail equip just displays an error message. OK, so we're still in the inventory. Let me just back up a second. And let's examine the trap door here. It's pitch black on the staircase. You can't see a thing. Maybe it would be best if we didn't go down, and then gives us the option. So it's already warning us that we probably shouldn't go down, but let's just be brave. So we walk down to the basement, and as you can see here, uh, we got hurt in the process, and we had a considerable amount of damage done. So that's not good. So let's see. Let's use our brains here. How do we get to a dark basement? Hmm. Well, we can equip the flashlight. So let's go ahead and equip the flashlight and we are equipped and we can go ahead and try the trap door again okay it seems to have worked and we're in another room fairly similar to the first room in in terms of the menu and layout but there's obviously all kinds of different things to do here and uh, let's see one of the puzzles in the game is you need to work up a craving for cigarettes so that you can get the stuff in the cigarette machine however you don't necessarily can't do it right off the bat. As you see, we try to examine the cigarette machine. It says, yuck, the only time you smoke is when you're drunk. So the obvious solution is to get drunk. And we can do that by talking to Lito, the bartender. He offers us a drink. We will take the drinks. And it's doing a little bit of damage each time we drink. Cause drinking isn't good for you. But in order to progress through the game, we have to to a little bit of binge drinking and here we go let's go ahead and go to the cigarette machine craving some nicotine you pound on the machine and out falls a pack of cigarettes and a slip of paper 
So we have some inventory stuff added. So if you look at the inventory, you'll see that everything has been added here. We have the Marlboros, and under non-equipable items, we have a bank account statement, which this number is going to be useful for opening a vault in the bedroom. So here's just a little bit of the code of some of the things that we, we just did. We have the code for Lido, the bartender. Uh, he asked for your choice of if you want a drink, yes or no, and if choice equals one, take the drink and these things happen to you. Uh, health gets reduced, it checks to see if your health is below zero, and if it, if it does go below zero, it ships you over to the game over method. Um, and then if you deny the drink, he complains that you're not, uh, you know, why are you in the bar if you're not drinking? And also, one important thing to note is it, it adds a one plus one to cocktails. And as you know, if you have you need three drinks or more to unlock the cigarette machine. And here's the cigarette machine. Um, so as long as we have greater or equal to three, we can go ahead and proceed through. And once we get the cigarettes, it assigns an event to the action. Now, this event... Uh, is important because we we can now examine the cigarette machine and it'll tell us that we found everything we needed and basically everything that you do in this game an event is assigned to it so that you're not doing the same redundant things um, and for the most part that's how the game works each puzzle is different this is just one example but there's really dozens of these little puzzles throughout the game but I didn't necessarily try to reinvent the wheel here it's basically just method calls and then we go into a series of if if statements and uh, like validating user inputs and, and whatnot um, and that's sort of it uh, but as you can see here I do have a lot of code there's there's about 1800 lines of it and now obviously I do have some text in there so it's not purely 1800 lines but it's a whole lot of if statements a whole lot of method calls and like I mentioned validation so I don't want to necessarily go through everything, um, but I think you kind of get the idea of what's going on here based on what I showed you. Uh, I guess lastly, we can talk a little bit about the the boss battle when this is just kind of a standard uh, RPG type turn-based fighting system. Uh, essentially, here, we, well, let's check it out. Let's check out the code. Um, so I have your health, you have boss's health, and then you have a variety of attacks, attacks that you can do. And the boss also has an attack. And it pulls out an array here of random amounts of damage that he can do. And we have the, the random number generator. And based on the amount of damage that he does, a message will be displayed. Such as if he misses you, it, it displays a message he misses. If he does a lot of damage, it says... Uh, vicious knuckle sandwich to your head so uh, the game's kind of consistent with the amount of damage that's being done to you um, and I will go ahead and run the bass bottle in just a second here I'm gonna go ahead and play through the game and then uh, unpause the video and we'll do that okay so I just ran through the game while I had that paused uh, I didn't I obviously know how to do everything so it took me maybe five or ten minutes to run through everything but I kind of suspect that someone new to playing it, may, it might take them an hour because some of the puzzles are somewhat challenging. Uh, but, okay, so we're back in the bedroom now, and we can now enter the glowing door now that we've unlocked everything. And I don't really want to spoil the game. There's like a whole suspenseful build-up thing with all these different uh, keystrokes. But um, So this brings up to us to the battle sequence as you see we have the health of us and the uh, the enemy which is a shadow version of yourself and there's four things that we can do and each of the things pulls upon the array that I talked about earlier and kind of randomly generates action for the most part if you know what to do uh, you can successfully beat the game rather easily but each of these attacks have different strength, and uh, I guess I'll only bring that up really quick once again. So here's the player attacks. As you can see, uh, this is the array that it pulls from. It does an average of 6.9 damage. This is for the attack number one. 
and we have attack number two does the average of six damage uh, attack number three does 6.6 .6. and the last attack is the toe stomp it does the best 8.2 damage so if, if you're playing this game and you want to know what to do just continually do this and there are clues throughout the game to know that you should stomp on the enemy's injured feet but if you weren't you know paying attention enough you you might not beat the game because uh, there'll be a lot more luck involved because the enemy itself uh, he does 6.9 damage which a lot of your attacks don't don't quite match up with that so uh, let's just go ahead and let's do a brain batter this is kind of a high risk maneuver and I wouldn't do it if I was trying to beat the game you take a big swing, but Shadow Ryan ducks, damage negative zero. So we didn't hit him at all, and then he counters. So each time we attack, it goes right to his method, and he counters with a knee to our ribcage. Uh, let's try an eye gouge, and we missed. And he counters with a vicious knuckle sandwich to our head. So that's not, we're not doing so good. As you can see, we only have 80 health, and he still has perfect. So I'm going to start toe stomping him. And it looks to be working pretty well. We did 12 points damage. Uh, again, we did more damage. So, as you can see, that's kind of how it works. I'm just going to briefly just run through the game. Um, oops, I accidentally hit an invalid command and it told me so. So that's good that my validation works. And you can see after a few more attacks, it's 45 to 46. And I really don't necessarily want to win this because I don't want you guys to see the end. So I'm going to do the worst possible attacks and just hope that I uh, perform poorly on them. Uh-oh. It looks like I might accidentally win the game on accident just because my, uh, my brain batter was highly successful. Oh, well, now it's 11 to 11. So as you can see, there's a lot of suspense in this epic game here um, and he might kill us so oh and we end up winning the game I don't want you guys to see that because I want you to play it but as you can see the end so we successfully beat the game I guess you didn't get to see the game over sequence but it's similar to this except there's a big skull and crossbones on the screen um, well hopefully you enjoyed watching this little demo and if you're interested in playing the game give it a try um, let me know if you have any questions I guess or if if you're struggling with the game I have a strategy guide so yeah definitely check it out uh, thanks for watching